Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. Do like me a runaway Steamkin. It's not as insane in draft as it is in constructed, but it's still quite good, especially if you can build a deck around it a little bit. Uh, other good cards in the pack. It's not an exciting pack. Uh, best common, probably the Rosemain Centaur. And then the Wee Dragonauts can be fine too. But uh, yeah, we'll take a Steamkin. Can still be Boros or is it if we uh, start with a Steamkin? Two great uncommons in Nightfill Predator and Conclave Cavalier. And one of the best commons in Deadly Visits. There's no Boros or Is it card that's really jumping out here. And red black, not a supported archetype in this set, so taking the deadly visits basically means abandoning the Steamkin if we end up playing black. Nightfield Predator is probably the highest overall power level, but it does commit us to Demir, whereas taking deadly visit keeps us slightly more open. I think I would take Predator over Cavalier. Demir is also slightly better than Celesnia. I don't mind drafting Golgari in this set, but usually need to open a pretty good uncommon or rare to pull you into Golgari as opposed to Demir, which can work fine without any bombs. So we have outs to be a Demir deck, we have outs to be a red deck with Steamkin. Got a bunch of options. It's on the Demir front. Whispering Snitch is a playable card, but I'm not like super excited by it. Uh, Sever Strands can be fine, better in Golgari than Demir, but even in Demir, if you end up with a couple Burglar Rats, it can be a serviceable removal spell. And then on the kind of red aggro front, my pick would probably be the Fresh Face Recruits over Sure Strike as a close second. And is it Guildgate also a consideration for the Steamkin? It's difficult to splash the Nightfield Predator in an Izzet deck, and we don't really want to splash Steamkin in. Demir. So I don't value the guild gate here too highly, since we don't have a red card I want to splash in Demir yet. I think it's probably between Severed Strands as kind of the Demir pick, and then probably Recruits as the red aggro pick, which could go in Boros, but could also go in a uh, potential is it aggro deck. Predator, probably the better card over Steamkin, but uh, Recruits could maybe give us more outs to be both. Uh, the Boros aggro deck, or is it aggro, whereas Strands kind of pigeonholes us into Demir. All right, slight preference for the Sever Strands. So let's see if we can make Demir work. Well, there's no real Demir card I'm super hyped about, although shout out to Wishcoin Crab. We're looking at a Recruit once again, a Minotaur, big fan of the Dissident as well for green, although currently no real incentive to take green cards other than I guess Sever Strands for Golgari. So I think this time I do want to speculate on one of the non-Demir cards. And between the Minotaur and the Recruits, it's probably still the Recruits. If we do end up Boros, the Minotaur's not a super exciting card, don't have a ton of instants and sorceries in that deck. Whereas Recruit is still totally fine in the uh, is it aggro deck I'm talking about. And we can probably pick up a Wishcoin Crab or a Centipede later. Alright, second Creeping Chill, not exactly what we want. Whisper Agent is quite good, but so is the Bodyguard. Do we go down the Demir path and pick Whisper Agent, which I think is a pick over Poisoner and Adept, which are also both fine? Or do we take the Bodyguard and go down the Boros, or maybe still is it, Beatdown path? So the again, the flexibility of this being a red card and not a white card or a blue card means we could still be both Boros or is it aggro? So it gives us a little bit more flexibility. I do think Bodyguard is typically the better card over Agent, but of course we do still have that Nightfill Predator, which is not a bad incentive to stay Demir. And pretty straightforward Demir Guildgate. If we were still taking cards for the Bodyguard deck, um, could consider the Leapfrog for maybe is it aggro, otherwise there's a shield mate as a potential fine to drop in uh, Boros still, but uh, Demir Guildgate it is. Don't love having a second Sever Strands without having those rats. Not a huge fan of Wall of Mists as a blocker, 
And then there's a Lothos Giant, which is just okay in Dimir, nothing special. I guess we'll take a Giant for now. Another Dimir Guildgate. Sonic Assault would have been a good incentive to maybe move into Is it Aggro. So we could have had maybe even double Fresh Race Recruits, Bodyguards, Teamkin, uh, Leapfrog, and then Sonic Assault would have been a decent start to a blue red aggressive deck. But yeah, I don't mind a second Demir Guild Gates. And who knows, maybe we'll end up with a Guild Summit deck. Vapors could be fine, Child of Knights is an okay to drop if we need one. Maybe go for the uh, Vapors. Wield the Leapfrog as well. Don't think we'll be playing that one. Ooh, Crab Wield, nice. Just take an uncommon for the Voltaire, not gonna play the Painter. Alright, so very interesting first pack. I think in the seat you could have ended up the mirror like we did. Don't think we really passed up on anything. Took the Recruit over Centipede and Crab and Wield the Crab. So maybe could have had an extra Centipede. And then could have also ended up with a reasonable is it aggro deck, but Demir seemed probably the most open overall. And then we open this pack. Now Vraska is pretty splashable, so we could end up with a couple Golgari Guild Gates or Gateway Plazas and splash it in our Demir deck. Also big fan of the Nightville sprites, good way of enabling surveil turn after turn, great with a Turn 3 Darkblade Agent as well. And a Devious Cover-Up would also be a fine card if we end up with a more controlling Demir deck. We also have this Guild Summit, so I'm kind of down to Clown here, and we could just take Vraska, Splash Green, kind of hoard all the Golgari Guild Gates, and end up with a sweet Sultai deck. Not saying this is the correct pick, but let's have some fun. <laughs> okay. I guess... Four color is an option. Just splash all the planeswalkers. Okay. So now do I take is it Guildgate or do we still just take a Thought Erasure? So I don't think we're playing the recruit and the Steamkin, but hopefully we end up with enough Guildgate so we can splash Vraska and splash Ral and make the Guild Summit into a real card. Right, let's take the gate. Chad is disciplined. Golgari Guildgate, I see you. Although I probably have to take the Artful Takedown over it. It's just too good to pass up on. And we don't have a ton of removal yet. But yeah, the Golgari Guildgate would be a, a close second here too, I think. Alright, now we can probably take the Guildgate over Notion Rain. I do like me a Notion Rain too, but I think this time... It's not enough better than the gate, as opposed to our previous pack. Would definitely take another one. Otherwise there's a Dowser of Lights and a Demir Informant as good defensive cards. But those are pretty replaceable, so hopefully we'll end up with another Dowser at some point. We don't really want to splash for roots, but it is potentially sweet with our uh, Guild Summit. But I'm Probably just gonna take either the Plaza or the Agent here. Agent, how much Surveil do we have at the moment? We've got Whisper Agent, Vapors, and that's about it. Plaza can fix for both red and green, but is a bit clunky to get in play. And yeah, that's another concern I potentially have, is if we take all these gates, we might not end up with enough playable cards to fill out our curve, but I guess for now we'll take a Plaza, sure. Alright, I'm not taking the Boros Guildgate, that's for sure, but uh, I guess this Daneful Stroke is reasonable. Don't think I want to splash Sonic Assault or Electromancer, Stray's also not really where I want to be, so the only consideration is this, this Daneful Stroke here. This is the pack we opened, we wield a Devious Cover-Up, and Centipede. I don't actually know if we want to be a Devious Cover-Up deck, since we're gonna be playing a ton of tap lands, we're gonna be tapping out for the most part, so maybe it's better to just take the early creature to put in front 
of our planeswalkers to help protect them. Taking a counter spell here synergizes with the Whisper Agent, but that's about it. I guess it's okay with her all. I'll take a centipede for curve. And who knows, maybe I'll end up playing a wall of mist anyways. Don't think I need a second vapors. And a capture sphere wield as well as the dowser, so both quite good here. It's probably going to be easier to find another dowser than another capture sphere. Some leaning sphere here. Especially if we end up with a Glaive of the Guild Pact, the equipment that pumps equal to the amount of gates we have. Having more creatures like Dowser could be important. But, uh... I'll take the removal spell, pretty happy with Passwall Adept as a fine two drop. Silent Dart could have been an option too. And Barrier of Bones could synergize with our Severed Strands, although not super likely to play it. Alright, so heading into the last pack, we've got a pretty spicy one on our hands with Guild Summit. Right now we have six gates already, and two Mythic Rare Planeswalkers, so... Can we play all five colors? Trostani's definitely a powerful card, and we do have a Gateway Plaza, technically, that makes white mana. The question is, what are we passing up on. Like, District Guide could be good, but it's on the splash, which makes it a bit less interesting. There's like a Dowser of Lights, which can probably wheel. Necrotic Wound is not looking great in our deck. So, yeah, might as well. Probably gotta take the Deadweight here to have some cheap removal. This doesn't seem like a counterspell deck, so I don't think Sabotage is gonna be especially good here. And then Boros Guildgate might wheel, and then we'll take it, but it's a little awkward with our Nightfield Predator. Uh, Selesnya Guildgate is a bit awkward, since while it does fix for Vrask and Trostani, if we have a Selesnya Guildgate by itself, it's not going to be enough to cast Trostani. But what am I taking if I don't take Guildgate? A Spy Bug? but we don't have a ton of surveil, and I don't think this deck is about beating down with the spy bug. It's not a very good defensive card. When we have two planeswalkers, a Trostani, we just want to kind of play defense and try and find one of our planeswalkers to take over, maybe find a guild summit and draw a ton of extra cards. So I might take the guild gate anyways here. Golgari Guildgate, although probably need to take Watcher in the Mists, which is a bit too good to pass up on. And we don't have a ton of action at 5, so it fits in the curve quite nicely. Uh, there's a Boros Guildgate, I guess. Don't really want any of these other cards. Burgle Rat is looking good, but ooh, Clave of the Guild Pack, never mind, I almost missed it. Equipped creature gets plus one plus zero oh for each gate you control and has Vigilance and Menace. Now, Glaive is usually much better in the base green gate decks where you have a bunch of Burgle Rats and Iron Shell Beetles and Generous Trays that you can equip. But uh, it's probably just too good here. And then hopefully we can pick up some cheap 2 and 3 drops that we can suit up with a Glaive. Yeah, Glaive plus Vigor Spur Worm makes it essentially unblockable. There is a Plaza. There's another Celestian Guild Gate, but there's also Wishcoin Crab. Which is a fine defensive card here. So how many actual spells do we have? So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 Gates. So we're almost at the point where we have enough playables. Need like two or three more. Uh, in terms of fixing, right now we have essentially three white sources for Trostani. We have four green sources for Trostani and Vraska. And we have three red sources for Ral. So we're actually doing pretty okay on the mana. So I don't think we need to dedicate a ton more picks to gates. But a second plaza would kind of shore up the mana 
so we don't need to take any more gates essentially and then hopefully we can pick up some more cheap creatures and a child of night seems perfect two drop great with the glaive of the guild pact And we wield the Douser of Lights, which seems good here. Over Necrotic Wounds and Vapors and Disappearance. And Amuse Drake also seems quite good. Did pass up on the other Gate Synergy creature, but I don't really want to splash a red and white card in my base blue-black deck. And there's nothing here I want. Don't think we're playing a Necrolisk. Alright. I think we've got a pretty interesting deck here. I might even play this second pass wall. It's definitely a pretty unusual archetype. You don't often end up in the five color gate deck, but let's see if we can make it work. So I get to cut one more card. Probably the Leapfrog is my guess. Barrier of Bones goes with the Severed Strands. We've got a Muse Drake we can sacrifice to the Strands as well. And then our removal. So we've got the Strands, a Vapors, a Dead Weight, one Stroke as a Counter Spell, a Capture Sphere, an Artful Takedown, and then our Planeswalkers also double up as removal. And then a healthy amount of creatures to go with our Glaive. And then Guild Summit as a very powerful card draw spell. The problem with Utopia is that the Utopia itself is on the splash. So splashing for mana fixing is usually not where you want to be. Wall of Mist is an option if we just wanted another good early blocker. Uh, my problem with it is that it's a defender so we can't attack with it with a glaive. And we're also gonna spend most of the early game playing tap lands and plazas. So not having a ton of 2-drops is not necessarily a bad thing in this deck, since so much of the early game is going to be spent playing tap lands. So starting the curve at 3 and 4 mana is potentially still fine. So we're only splashing one red card, which is Raal. We have Is it Guildgate, Boros Guildgate, 2 Plaza, so we definitely don't need a Mountain. Then for the Trostani Splash, which is the only white card, we have Boris Guildgate, Salazian Guildgate, two plazas, so definitely don't need a planes. And then for the green splash, which is Vraska and Trostani, we have double Golgari Guildgate, Salazian Guildgate, two plazas, so don't need to add a forest, so the rest can be islands and swamps. We've got how many blue sources? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many black sources? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And looking at the distribution, it's pretty even. So we can decide whether to add a swamp or an island. We have double blue for Watcher, double blue for Predator, double black for Predator, but no other double black spells. So maybe we add another island. And many of the early creatures in the deck are also blue. So I don't mind an extra island. Well, this could be a beautiful train wreck. Or it could be a legit uh, five-color base Demir deck here. I have no idea. There's only one way to find out. Rainbow regrets it is. The Boros Guildgate looking a little awkward with the Nightfill Predator, but I guess I'm down. Let's get this plaza in play. That way it doesn't quite deal with the fire urchin, but we can play a barrier of bones. And island seems fine. Can even play Nightfill Predator on curve.
Now the card I'm afraid of here is Sure Strike. That's an easy way to get past the Nightfield Predator. Blade Instructor, that's fine. Play Watcher in the Mists. Could also deadweight the Blade Instructor, but Watcher technically blocks it. Could go Muse Drake plus deadweight, maybe that's better. Kill the Instructor before it gets to Mentor and play Muse Drake. Although Muse Drake already lines up well against the Blade Instructor, so I could also go Muse Drake plus Guildgate here. So yeah, I think it's between Muse Drake, play a Boar's Guildgate, or just play Watcher. I guess I don't hate Drake plus Guildgate here. And then we'll stay back with the Predators, since we're not really interested in racing. Alright, so we'll just put this here and take three. Now a Unicorn, I don't mind weighing down with a Deadweight here. And then we can still play Watcher. Next turn play Vraska. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let's see what they have. Eh, that's fine. So Ral doesn't deal any damage at the moment. Or I can just flash in Whisper Agent first and then play my walkers. I've got some options. I guess I don't hate playing the Agent first here to better protect our Planeswalkers. And then I should probably consider trading. Yeah, I'll take a look first to see what's on top. If we find a, a good blocker for the Guardian, I don't need to trade. Opponents on empty. So now... I guess I like... Raw plus before Vraska minus. Take Centipede. Don't have a ton of instants and sorceries for all. It's mainly just a card draw engine here. But that's fine. Hmm. Time. So let's gum up the board before we play Vraska. And then I might just win with the Vraska ultimate here. Pass all to make our creature unblockable too. Have to be a bit careful that we don't deck ourselves. Choose wisely, because the other one's going bye bye. Yeah, I'm just gonna plus on nothing. Could also start minusing and just attack. But it's more fun to get the ultimate off. So 
something like this. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Well, that one's better than expected. And we haven't even drawn our guild summit. Do get to play a glaive, but we're pretty far from playing any creature to go with the glaive. Do have the green for Vraska already. But yeah, hitting our land drops is going to be our biggest challenge. And with the two lander on the play, I don't think I can keep. Alright, I guess we'll keep this. Now if I put Trostani on the bottom, we're probably not going to see Trostani again until the end of the game. But uh, yeah, this is pretty far from getting casts. The Selesnia Guild Gate out of nowhere. Okay. Opponents also spicing it up. With an Arclight Phoenix out of nowhere. Capture Sphere is not a bad answer to it though. And the Watcher could block it. Although I don't know how reliable that will end up being. Yeah, let's just Capture Sphere it. Sever strands could be okay. Alright, pretty happy we kept that on top. Although a trade here would be totally fine. They could have the one mana trick, or I can just take it and then next turn go. Centipede plus Sever Strands, put a counter on Watcher. It's probably better. Alright, I see. And Glaive is gonna be nice, but gotta play this Dowser first. So this is 5 mana, Vigilance and mana, so we can keep attacking with the Watcher, hopefully. Right, never mind. So this is representing the trick from before, maybe. Plus two, plus two. So probably just take it for now. Vraska. Can destroy the Luminous Bones. So I think my play is going to be Plague Glaive. Not equip. Flash and Whisper Agent to ambush guards, which is going to prompt a pump spell to get that out of the way. And then I will be able to Vraska to clear Luminous Bonds. 
At which point we can maybe equip the Watcher to start attacking. Yeah, Might of the Masses is also in the set. That's another pump spell they could have. But then the Tutus would have attacked me as well, I think. That's unfortunate. So keeping a land doesn't really help me. So if I block the the two two, they might just let a trade for the district guard happen and use a pump spell to kill my adepts. But I guess I don't really have a choice. Right, so that's the take hearts. But now my Dowser is gone and they added a Rosemane to the board, so it's not looking great. So I could play Vraska, clear the Luminous Bonds, have a 4-5 on defense. Uh, Rosemane attacks, probably got a chump with the pass wall. Killing the Luminous Bonds is probably my best bet. And hope they send a bunch of stuff at Vraska. And then I guess I'll keep land in hand to represent a, a trick here. Would much prefer to see an attack on Vraska than an attack on my life total. Because then next turn I could equip the pass wall which can trade for the centaur. Instead now it might be forced to chump. Not quite the draw we were hoping for. So pretty sure we're dead here. If we had more time we could start equipping the Watcher with the Glaive attack and maybe move the Glaive back to the pass wall to uh, keep that big ground creature to trade off for the Rosemane. It was definitely a close game. Trostani, of course, a very strong card. So this still has us taking 8. And they had a trick anyway. Alright, opponent kind of had it all here. GG's. Yeah, I shouldn't have bought on the Trostani at the start. Alright, uh, this seems fine. <laughs> Speaking of Trostani, we're not too far away from casting it. Can probably afford to play the pass wall for now, since we don't have a turn 3 play. Turn for Nightfell Predator on curve again. A Legion Guild Mage, sure. So if I play Golgari Guildgate, I can play Trostani next turn. Or Rahl for that matter. Or I could play Nightfell Predator now. I mean, both are pretty good. And I could go Nightfell into Rahl regardless.
Well, the uh, guild leaders are in full force today. That's for sure. Probably gotta take it, and then... I need to keep the Predator to trade off for Aurelia. So playing Rawl here doesn't seem great. So my play might just be tapped Guildgate and pass, which is not exciting. But Rawl's just gonna die. It will have drawn me a card and absorbed some damage, but then I still won't be able to play Trostani the turn after. Opponent maybe respecting a counter spell. Dead weight, not a bad pickup. Can dead weight the guild mage, which is going to be a long term problem too. Splashing Trostani in a Demir deck, don't see that every day. So now what? Definitely have to block Aurelia and hope they don't have a sure strike. And then blocking the Urchin doesn't seem great here. Especially when the giant can block it next turn. So I think I'm just blocking like this. They've got some nice rares too. And Raal doesn't really deal with the uh, Light of the Legion here. Now I could erase Light of the Legion just using the pass wall with my lifelinkers. Could play a Lothless Giant first. Rawl could soak up some damage from the Light of the Legion, draw me some cards, so we have some options. I think I play Rawl and plus, and hope to find removal. Yeah, if they don't attack Rawl, then I could take down and a minus Rawl to finish off the Angel. Right, going face. Block Urchin with everything. They didn't have the Sure Strike earlier, they could have the plus 2 plus 2. Which on the Fire Urchin would be plus 3 plus 2, so 6, 7. So I would have to quadruple block to actually kill it. But I would gain a bunch of life too. Taking it would just put me dead to the plus two plus two. And a triple block wouldn't be enough to kill the urchin through the plus two effects. I think quadruple blocking is probably the best bet here. Ah, that's too bad. But we can take out Light of the Legion at least. Yeah, probably gonna go for it and then take my hit from the Fire Urchin. Hopefully don't die to it and then Giant to stabilize. And then do I attack? Probably. Or I could keep back to maybe save Rawl if they don't have another instant or sorcery. But I think I'm fine if they attack Rawl here. Just gotta hope we top deck some action of the top. Guild Summit would be great. 
Frasca would be good. Got some good fives. And they do go after all. Flying creatures are problematic, but the Watcher could be a good blocker. Now I might Giant first to get a good blocker out there for the Fire Urchin. And if they do remove it, then I'll have the Watcher for patrol. But the Watcher is not a great blocker for the Urchin is uh, the issue here. But they still have a bunch of cards in hand, could be more removal in there. And then hopefully Watcher surveils us into some goodies. And there's a Luminous Bonds. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, that's probably not gonna cut it. Yeah, I think we're dead on board if they attack with everyone. And a candlelight vigil. So chump patrol. Chump and still super dead. Alright, GG's. Well. So far we lost against uh, Trostani, we lost against Aurelia. Hopefully we can dodge a guild leader in the next one. Fine hand. Looks like a normal Demir deck. Alright, there's our guild summits. A lot of gates come. That's fine. Harpooner would have been quite effective against our Muse Rake. Can also take it out with our dead weights, which I don't mind here. Opponent on Junt. Alright, probably can't keep Dowser, but I'll keep a land. I mean, Dowser afterwards wouldn't be terrible since we get to draw with the Mute Rake as well. But I think we would prefer finding some gates. Ocran Assassin's fine. There we go. <laughs> Double Ocran Assassin. Oh man, this Vapors could have been so good. And probably want to play the Celestia Guild Gate over the Golgari one. I guess Passwall's fine. Don't want to commit a ton of creatures to the board with the Assassin, especially if they have a pump spell. That could get ugly. But uh, I'm not too invested in this pass wall, especially with uh, Summit drawing us a ton of extra cards. Alright. That's an unexpected risk factor. Vraska, pretty nice. We 
can start sacking some land since we're flooding a bit. Could see a pump spell here. Just to trade for the pass fall. Alright. That's good. They discarded the elemental, which actually could have been a pretty big problem. A Glavenized top deck. Cycle land first. Sever strands. So I can play Glaive. And equip. Minus Vraska here. Oh, I won't forgive this. And our opponent explodes. All right, sweet. All right, so we're two and two. Let's see if we can get a couple more. Seems fine. Lazav. Well, <laughs> I guess we've seen all the guild leaders in this draft. Lazav, Aurelia, Trostani, Rall and Vraska. There's our glaive. Could play the crab, could end of turn take down while keeping up disdainful stroke, could play glaive keep up disdainful stroke. I'll play crab. The Almighty Crab still got a two for one. So I can play Child of Knights, keep up Stroke, and next turn play Glaive Equip. How about a Nightfield Predator with a Glaive of the Guild Pact? Sounds better. Murmuring Mystic. It's not a bad way to potentially deal with a Nightfield Predator. I mean, I could sever strands and Mystic right now, maybe that's the safer play. Although I guess Lazav can turn into the Murmuring Mur Mystic as well, so I guess that doesn't really solve my problem. If they try and triple block with three bird tokens, we can maybe kill one of them at instant speed. So it's still going to be a while before they can actually deal with the Predator. They're going to turn Lazav into a Douser of Lights instead. 
Sure. Passwall's not bad. Can sneak in the Child of Knights. Get some life back. Seems fine. Right, take down, make a bird. Vapors, also a way to deal with a bunch of birds. Probably just send the predator and pass, and then I could tap down something, kill a bird. Opponent might have a disdainful stroke in hand that they're trying to keep up as well. For now I guess I can take another 4, although if I draw a gate I could just kill them next turn with a predator too. So the first one is the tap, so we'll tap Lazaf, kill the bird. And there's a stroke. So I think I'm just gonna chump now and then cast Vapors. And then don't need islands, dead weights. Doesn't seem great here. And they will need to make two birds here to stay alive. They could turn Lazav into a Mystic and cast a cheap instant or sorcery. But I don't think they'll be able to make three birds and trade off for the Predator, so we're pretty safe. Alright, GG's. I couldn't resist. I'm good at what I do, and what I do is win. Sure. Double dissident is going to be a problem. Well, I guess we can play a Wishcoin Crab and hope it survives. 
narrator. It did not. I mean, if I block the two dissidents, they can only pump one. So maybe that's still the play of just playing Trostani here. It's definitely the card that's more likely to get me to the next turn. And if they're forced to pump Dissident, they can't add anything to the board. Nah, opponent sends everyone. If they have more instant speed removal for Trostani, we probably just lose, but... Don't think I can play around one. So my thinking is we can put one there, one there, one there. They can pump one Dissident, but not save the other one. And Trostani will still survive. Alright, that's not so bad. So now, six mana. Can go pass wall plus artful takedown. And we still have a flyer in case they play a flyer, but in Golgari, it's pretty limited to Bartos and Bats. I guess I can block, and then if they pump, respond with the takedown. Tap and kill. Time to go digging. And those seem quite good. Drake drawing to Disdainful Stroke. Trostani can probably get a sneaky attack in. Yeah, I guess I'll still play the Drake here. Don't have a great blocker for the Lurcher, but even if I need to trade off my Watcher, it's not the end of the world. Or I can take five. And then next turn play Douster, which is maybe the play here. If they kill Trostani, I can still block Harpooner with a Child of Knights. So let's see, are they dead? 8, 12... Don't have enough mana to kill them here, so I'll kill them in two turns. Suppose I could make the Watcher unblockable too, but I'm fine if they want to chump. Alright, sweet. Opponent had a nice aggressive start, but Rostani able to stabilize. And then uh, some timely removal spells and counter spells along the way. Yeah, this seems fine. The barrier synergizes with Vraska pretty well.
That pilfering imp could be annoying. Right, opponent's gonna have a look, they can't resist. Planeswalker it is. Good thing they couldn't take away my wish coin crab. Dead weights. Doesn't seem needed anymore. We've got bigger fish to fry. So they're keeping up the Zainful Stroke here, so we'll just play Crab. And I don't really want to trade Passwall for Poisoner, since Passwall is the way we could close out the game. Also, we don't even have double blue for Nightfield Predators, so... Opponent's pretty much forced to keep up a Counterspell for the rest of the game, since they can't really beat Predator once it resolves. So we can take our time. So I guess we'll just make Crab unblockable. Hit for two. Technically could attack and then before blockers still make the Crab unblockable. In case of like a, an artful takedown tapping it down. And then I wonder if we should play the Celestia Guild Gate here. Nah, probably still the Demir one. If they do decide to tap out I can play the Predator still. Right, so they still have Disdainful Stroke up. So I'm not gonna play the Predator. Not gonna play the guild gates in case of a burglar rats or disinformation campaign. So that baits out the disdainful stroke. Now of course they could have another counter spell in hand. But Nightfield Predator is the card we really want to resolve. Alright, time for a predator. Although the bats can also just block it, so... We're now in a weird racing situation. Have to play the gate if we want to play giants. Nice, Sphinx. So I'm afraid... We will have to trade Predator for Sphinx here, given the chance. Because the uh, pass wall can just make Sphinx unblockable, so that's gonna kill us in two turns. And our opponent's just gonna take it. So we don't quite have lethal with Giant and Predator being unblockable. But it's close. And a lance doesn't give me three activations, still only two. So ideally we just draw a removal spell here. That's awkward. <laughs> OK, 
can cast a Ral, didn't draw our gateway plazas, guild gates of the right colors. So, I mean, now the predator can attack. I can make giant and crab unblockable. That's eight, that's exactly 11. So unless they have the one mana minus three minus so trick, this kills them and can't really beat them having anything here, but yeah, it looks like they have the trick. But still have to go for it. Alright, and GG's. So ended our run at uh, four and three. Did face some pretty tough opposition. Faced a bunch of guild leaders, but uh, of course we had three of uh, the guild leaders of our own, so can't really complain. Only drew the guild summit once, but that did pull us pretty far ahead. And then the glaive did a ton of work too in that game. We won with it. So overall, pretty fun deck, and I think. Uh, it kind of proves that building these 4-5 color mana bases is not too difficult if you prioritize gates and gateway plazas for fixing. So let's crack some packs, although they're going to be mostly filled with gems. And a Theros booster for good measure with a Perforos' Intervention, pack one, pick one. Probably the Intervention still over Acolyte and uh, Oracle here. All right, sweet. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.